Live. Brought to you by wonderful Florida Citrus. Florida oranges and grapefruit, fresh frozen and canned juices. All rich in natural vitamin C and packed with Florida sunshine. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm very happy to announce a return engagement of one of our most charming guest panelists from Hollywood, Cesar Romero. my pleasure to introduce that very lovely and very talented star of the theater and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who has more labors than Hercules and will be taking a much deserved vacation after tonight's program in Florida, Mr. Bennett Cerf. The citrus commission, everybody else in Florida is happy at last because it got warm today and it's going to be glorious for the next month. I They've pray. done it for you. <laughs> and here to keep us warm tonight is our famous panel moderator, John Charles Dale. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Nice to have Mr. Romero here with us. Of course, we've got some occupations that we think will give Mr. Romero and the rest of the panel a little bit of trouble. At least we hope so. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. All right, now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? That high wind that accompanied the cold today. <laughs> Mary Blythe, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs. Miss. Blythe? Miss, Miss Blythe? That's right. Well, then, some young man's going to be incredibly lucky someday. Miss Blythe, will you meet the panel? Panel, Miss Blythe, will you come over here and join me? I wonder if you're familiar with the way we keep score. Yes, I am. In mm -hmm. that event, let's let the folks at home, those who brave the winter tempests and come to the theater, that is, all except those four treasured friends of mine on the panel, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> all right, panel, uh, Miss Blythe is salaried, and I think we ought to begin the general questioning with Cesar Romero. Hmm. Uh, Miss Blythe, do you, um... Uh, do you deal in services of any kind? Yes, I do. Are these services av available to both men and women? Uh, yes, they are. They are. Small conference. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Mr. Romero, you can keep that yes, sir. I can keep on going. Yes. Thank you very much. There's a technicality involved here which will mislead you all, I hope. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, well, uh, 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 could I use your services? Yes, you can. I could. Yeah. Uh, when you perform these services, do you perform them uh, indoors, say, like in an office or a workshop of some kind? Yes. You work indoors? That's right. When you work, do you uh, wear a costume or a, uh, a dress other than your usual street clothing? Yes, it's a... Sort of, sort of like a uniform? That's right. Uh, do you do any physical work in this yes. service that you perform? Mm -hmm. Do you uh, touch the people that you perform this service for? Yes. You do touch them? <laughs> Um, <laughs> is this uh, service that you perform, uh, does it make you feel better after you've had this thing performed upon you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel better physically uh, for it? 
Do you feel better physically yes. as a matter of a, a sense of an improvement in your physical well-being? Yes, I know you're going to say no. That's fine. That's <laughs> one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Miss Blythe, uh, and you certainly are, uh, Mr. Daly neglected to tell us where you were from. Was there a reason for that, John? No, actually, I'd be happy to tell you where Miss Blythe is from. In fact, I'll ask Miss Blythe to tell you. Tucson, Arizona. Uh-huh. You certainly have a divine we sunburn. Were. Must be warmer out there. <laughs> Uh, now, you, this service that you perform, when you touch the person, do you touch them uh, above the shoulders? Yes. Uh, do you... Uh, <laughs> uh, does what you do have anything to do with the region of the head? Yes. Uh, does it have anything to do with the region of the mouth? No. Small conference. <laughs> you wouldn't have liked to go after all, huh? <laughs> Arlene, we want to be very fair about this. Since when? No, I, well, <laughs> a couple of minutes ago, actually. There was a technicality a moment ago, actually, that I was afraid would mislead you all. And, and uh, both Smith, Miss Blythe and I feel that it's barely possible we could mislead you with... Uh, no answer to that last question. It is possible that it might have something to do with the region of the mouth, therefore we'll give you a yes. Uh-huh. Thank you, John. It's perfectly all right. Uh, is the shop that you work in a place where other people do the same work that you do? Yes. Uh, would it be in the realm of a beauty shop of any kind or a, a barber shop of any kind? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well... Do you have anything to do with the hair? Yes. Do you cut it? Yes. You've certainly done a great job on your own. And you could probably do as much for Caesar. Uh, I need one. Are, are you a, a, a barber? That's right. Yes. A female barber? <laughs> Actually, and the region of the mouth would have been a mustache or beard, John. Trimming a mustache Thank you. or a beard. Is and they're right? getting very big these days. The beards, and, oh, I know. <laughs> Actually, you're real gone if you got yes, some chin whiskers, right. you know. But Miss Blythe is a men's barber and actually has a very interesting history. She spent three years in the WAFs and then came out and went to the Tucson Barber College, right? Mm -hmm. Took a seven-month course. Does it take seven months to... Yes. Seven months, there. really? Some people have a lot of hair, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I had dinner at Wafts tonight. And, oh. of course, oh, the yeah, other John, interesting... John, getting a haircut does make you feel much better physically. It really does. I feel like a new man when I get my hair cut. <clears throat> it doesn't weaken you? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, <laughs> Samson, it's nice to have you with us. <laughs> but just to finish up, Miss Blythe is now in the Garden Plaza Barbershop in Tucson, and the nice thing about it is, at night, uh, she has an avocation. She sings in a nightclub, the Monte... Monte Vista. Monte Vista Inn. And that, you didn't notice that husky voice. We were hoping yeah, that would mislead you a bit, you know. You be part of a barbershop quartet, too. A barbershop quartet. Thank you most, very much, Miss Smith. Most yes, bar Bennett. Most barbers talk so much, they all get husky voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Will you take another to the All right, panel, I must congratulate you. A very good beginning. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Ed. Ed Becker, is that right? <laughs> Ed, where are you from? Long Island. Long Island? That's right. That's part of New York, isn't it? That's right. Near New York, anyway. Very near. Well, you probably know all of these folks by sight. Panel, Mr. Becker, Mr. Becker, panel. Will you come over and join me now? Do you know how we keep score? I think I do. All right, then let's let everybody here and about, and those looking at home, know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mr. Becker is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Becker, do you work for a profit-making organization? I do. <laughs> <coughs> Makes quite a bit of profit, huh? Quite a bit. Uh, that laugh has thrown me completely. Uh, do you work indoors? 
I do. Uh, on the ground? <laughs> I don't mean on the ground. Basically. I don't mean on the ground floor. I mean just in something that doesn't take off or go to sea. Yes. Uh, do you have any product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Romero. Uh, you worked for a profit-making organization and got a big laugh. <laughs> do you, by any uh, chance, uh, uh, perform your duties for some form of government? No. No. That's, uh... <laughs> Uh, a tax collector, I don't know. <laughs> That's two down and eight to go, Miss Press. You know of a profit-making government, huh? <laughs> They'll be after you. Uh, you're a, a husky, well-built fellow, Mr. Becker, if I may say so, and I may, may I? Thank you. I wonder if there is anything protective about your work. <laughs> no. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Becker, you, you also have a, a sort of a rare fish look about you. I mean that in a very nice way. Uh, would you be possibly connected with any form of sport or game that might uh, lead to some betting? Well, you mean bookmaking? No. <laughs> I'm a publisher. Bookmaking is a very nice occupation. <laughs> uh, that's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you deal with both men and women? Or could both men and women use your services? Mm, yes, I'd both. say yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You'd say yes, but would you mean it? Definitely. Yes. All right. Could I use your services? You could. Yes. Would I find it fun? <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> Would I come to you for your services rather than ringing you up to come to me? It could be either way. Well? This is very hard, Dorothy, because what we're getting here is the area of um, engagement of services, I suppose, and this could be one way or the other, actually, that you, you could uh, choose to go and ask if the service is available, or uh, alternately, you could ask Mr. Becker to call upon you to see if you wish to use the services. Well, that sounds very convenient. Uh, do you use your hands in your work? It, to what degree? To any degree at all, like writing with a pencil or typing or uh, touching people or... Small time. ...carrying up tickets? Some of that area. Yes, I do. Uh, do you ever sit behind a desk? No. No. Five down and Glad five to, to go, Mr. Me. Romero. Was it established whether you performed your services indoors or outdoors? It has been established that the indoors. services were indoors. Yeah. Do your services uh, pertain to uh, anything other than a relation with human beings? <laughs> it pertains strictly to human beings. Strictly no, to You human had beings. animals in mind, did yes. you? Yes. No. That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Well, now, about this business that has, gets a laugh on profit-making, is, uh, is it an enormous business in the United States? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> now, let, let me try to put this in focus, Arlene. All things are relative. If you have in mind now something of the magnitude of uh, continental can or U.S. steel or something like I'd that, like the answer to. would be no. Uh -huh. But it is certainly a sizable area of activity in the United States that uh -huh. Mr. Becker is interested in. Well. <laughs> now, uh, it was, it, it, did anybody ask, I, I missed whether there was a product or not. Did anybody ask that yet? The question has asked and no been product. asked. There, and there is product. no product. No product. Uh -huh. Now, where you work inside, would this be in a very large place that you work? Yes. Uh, do people ask questions of you? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Becker, uh, maybe I fogged up my last question. I want to get it very clear. Did I get an answer from you that you had nothing whatever to do with the field of sport? Correct. It, right. That was correct. That's I mean, right. I mixed it up with the betting. I was no, going to be no. sure. Oh, no. Actually, we, we meant to convey to you that Mr. Becker had nothing to do with the field of sport. In the place sport. where you toil so nobly for your bread and butter, is there, has there anything in these places connected with food or drink? No. Uh, <clears throat> that makes it eight down and two to go. Miss Kilgallen. 
uh, would you say that your service was uh, in the United States and according to our standard of living an essential service for most people rather than a luxury service? No. That makes it nine down and one to go, Mr. Romero. Oh. Uh, is your work more mental than physical? It's both. <laughs> I would let uh, the answer stand there, Mr. Romero, if you're willing. It's uh, both yes and no. Do you need any, uh, any special training for this work that you do? Yes. Now, this is special training, but not necessarily within the context of that question as normally asked on this program. There is no degree necessary, graduate degree necessary. Would you like a conference? You, like a conference? you may have uh, 30 seconds for a conference. Easy. He looks like the kind of fellow that pushes people around the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> 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 ah, something, something to do with mining. Runs the garbage like mining concession diamonds. or something. But he could, I could call him garbage and he could go The garbage concession. <laughs> Oil mining or diamond mining? Would that be a product? Be oh, a that's product. a product. Of course, I pass to Arlene. All I'm right. stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no product. I'm, uh, would it have anything to do with the wealth of the country? Uh, 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 I pass to you. <laughs> <laughs> that it? Uh, last stab. Has it anything to do with transportation? No. No. Ten down and no more to go. I want you to meet Mr. Edward Becker, chorus boy in the Broadway musical The Body Beautiful, produced by <laughs> Miss Dorothy Kilgallen's husband. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can see why we got all the laughter, Dorothy, when you were asking about a profit-making organization. <laughs> I'm sure upset all of you. And Mr. Becker sings and dances. Do something for us, Mr. Becker. I'd like to sing an aria for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, Ed. We fooled him, and it's nice to have had you here to help us. Thank you. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Right. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with uh, Bennett Sir. Would, could I ask, would your name be more likely to appear on the front page of Variety than the front page of the Wall Street Journal? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, I think it might be any place these days. <laughs> Miss Gilgallan? That's a wonderful imitation of Ed Wynn. Yes, Wynn's. it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, have you ever been on the Broadway stage? I've, uh, I've got to tell you the truth. I've, uh, I have been occasionally. And if uh, I was you, I would go home tonight, having not guessed the chorus boy for the Body Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I may not. <laughs> Mr. Romero? Uh, are you better known for work in motion pictures than in the theater? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth again. It's a kind of a, a split decision, you know what I mean, you crazy Spaniard, you. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Francis? I don't know, I hate not to let this gentleman stay out all night because he's so funny always, but I have a suspicion that he has put a Philip into the rank of sergeant. Have you? Yes, Ali. <laughs> Is it the inimitable <coughs> Philip Silvers? <laughs> Some just 
disguise that one. <laughs> <laughs> with this horrible voice of mine, I've been on... This is your eighth year, John. I've been on with you about three times, three and times. this is the story I go through all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I was on, I coughed, and everybody said, Phil Silvers, and that's it. <laughs> Last time we let you go around once. <laughs> Thank you. It's so cold outside, I'm glad to be in. Though. It's so cold, I just saw Steve Allen hugging Ed Sullivan. That'll give you an idea. <laughs> well, that's a maverick is ignoring the both of them. Hi, you, Steve. Oh, it's nice my. to see you. I'm fine, fellas. We're see very you. old and dear friends. I've uh, done quite a few. Can we talk a little? Am I... Sure. <laughs> uh, Caesar and I have done some pictures together. And we date back a long way. Yeah. Did you, know you ever dance a, with him? What was the girl? I will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you'll be the funniest dance team you ever saw. <laughs> yes, sir. You may leave the room. You raise your hand. I made before going away to the war with you, Phil. What'd you say, Caesar? The last picture I made before going away to the war was with you. And That's right. It's called Coney Island. And remember? you got worsely abused with me than you did in the war. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I yes, Dorothy. Uh, I wanted to explain to Phil why I think I didn't recognize that chorus boy from The Body Beautiful. You don't go to uh, the show. It's obvious. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, on, on stage, they're all boxers, I think, and they're in trunks, and this is the first time I've seen him with his clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a boxer in trunks. They look awfully formidable just when they have their fur on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a boxer I'm once sorry. without trunks, and uh, don't be nervous in the booth, because this is a very true story. You know, at Madison Square Garden, Bennett, in the catacombs of the garden, uh, there are two fighters who are engaged as, substitu as a substitute fight. They may never get on for a month, but in case there's a series of quick knockouts, these two fellows are on hand, and they've gotten to be real friendly. They play pinochle with each other. One night at the garden, there was about five straight knockouts, nothing going past the third round, and so they needed some extra time, and somebody must have rushed down to the room. Hey, well, you're on. And these two guys quickly put on their robes and were introduced. In the, in the arena, they were a substitute fight. Uh, they got their instructions for the referee, went back to the corner, and then Bedlam broke loose. One of them forgot his trunks. <laughs> <laughs> these are the kind of stories I'm associated with. <laughs> aren't, you, uh, aren't you moving with your stories to another day? Aren't Any you? reason why everybody loves you? God love you. Always say the right thing. What yeah. else would I be here for? <laughs> we, uh, outside of seeing you lovely people, we go on... Friday nights now, John. Yes, instead, instead of, of Thursday. Tuesday. Well, Tuesday. there's a reason for it. We yes, wanted what? to get Doberman closer to Bath Day if we could. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Tuesday, 8 to 8.30 now, and it's going to be uh, Friday. It was Tuesday. Yeah, 8 but 8 it's 8. going to be Friday, 9 to 9.30, beginning this week. Yes, right? and please, everybody, watch. I need the money badly. <laughs> I'm a very big tipper, you know. What's your opposition, Phil? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think you're celebrating a wedding on Friday night on this, this move, aren't you? Isn't Lee and Mary Weather going to be worried? No, Mary? yes, that's right, in the play. You do read everything. I read everything. I would I like to say in passing, move. John, I know you don't hold... What are you doing there? <laughs> He's getting nervous. You're either doing something very rude or giving me a signal. I don't know what it is. I, uh... I, I, incidentally, you're also an old friend. George was our stage manager in High Button Shoes, right? I didn't know you with your clothes on. We, uh, <laughs> we were a very friendly show. But, John, in passing, I must say to you, I'm an avid uh, watcher and listener of this show, and this will be strange to you in this more or less sentimental mood for me because we are all habitués of Tuchor's AC and we're old friends. I'd like to think so. But in one phase of my life, you are more or less an idol of mine. Your command of the language and your charm and warmth is one of the most delightful yeah, things on the air. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, we are both students in the same uh, elocution school. Toots taught me all I know he in did. this area. And you're, you're Unfortunately with me, it rubbed off. <laughs> uh, well, Phil, John, can I say one word to Phil? A uh, bit of a compliment. Thank heaven you're not opposite us in your new time. Oh, I should say so. There's enough for all of us. <laughs> no, no. There really isn't. I'd fracture you, but I wanted to be nice. <laughs> the thing I want to say, Phil, I don't know of anybody and I'm not as knowledgeable about show business as I'd like to be, but I don't know of anybody who isn't happy about the wonderful success that you've made as Sergeant Bilko. And uh, Friday night at 9 to 9.30 p.m. is going to be a wonderful hour for everybody. Now. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, Cesar Romero, it has been nice to have you with us on the panel congratulate you and all your colleagues on the panel on 
our first contestant tonight, and it's nice to know we stuck you with the second one. <coughs> On that happy note, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Caesar. Come again. It's always fun having you. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night. And good night, Arlene. It's been good wonderful night. to see you again. Thank you, Caesar. You going back to Hollywood tomorrow? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Well, we'll miss you here, and we're going to miss Bennett, too, who's going down to that Florida sunshine. And it is warmer. No snowshoes, no skis. That's right. So Just lots of orange juice. Happy fountain blow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arlene. Caesar, I want to tell you, it's much more fun having you tonight than the last time you were on this show. John was away. Do you remember? I That's was saying, right. And I was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> you always forgot to oh. flip the cards. I certainly <laughs> did. John, I never knew how much I loved you until you were missing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good night. you, Bennett. Thank Good you night. very much. And one serious word. Don't forget, when you help your heart fund, you help your own heart. With that happy good night to all of you, and thank you very much for being with us on What's My Line? If you'd like to be a contestant, send a picture we can keep and your occupation to What's My Line? CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22 New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark and Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.